Hey YouTube, it is March 20th, 2023. <sighs> Welcome to the Bob Continuum. Um, I wanted to put up a quick video about some revelation I've been getting. It's really strange, you know, the more, the more time you spend in God's presence and the more time you pray in tongues, the more revelation you get. And you, you reach a point where you don't really know what to do with it. And, and when you look around at the world today, you get frustrated. You think, why should I bother sharing this with anybody? No one's interested. Uh, sometimes I think this stuff might be useful after the uh, after the rapture for people who are lost during the tribulation. And then I think, well, um, this stuff's not going to be available during the tribulation. They're going to destroy it, you know, any Christian content, I would think. I don't know. Maybe people will remember it. Maybe people will watch to make fun of me, you know. Maybe they'll... Maybe they'll have second thoughts and they'll remember what I said. So uh, I had an interesting piece of revelation that I think could be useful to people who, who watch YouTube because there are people on, uh, on this service, they call themselves thought leaders. And not, not everybody who does this you know, calls themselves a thought leader. They, they have other names for themselves. And thought leader itself is a disturbing term because it sounds like 1984. You know, it sounds like... Uh, it sounds like Big Brother, you know. It's it's amazing that anybody would allow some some leftist nut to tell them what to think, and, and that they'd be proud of that, you know, that they'd be pleased to say this this random person that I see on the internet is my thought leader. That's really disturbing to me. That's um, that's what happens in cults, you know. You have people who who tell you what to think. Um, and yet in America, this is considered normal now. I never thought we could reach this point. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about them. One of the things God keeps showing me is that there's symmetry in the supernatural. When you see something in God's kingdom, you should look for the counterfeit in Satan's kingdom. When you see something in Satan's kingdom, you should try to find out what, what good thing in God's kingdom he's trying to copy. Because there's probably something out there you're missing out on, you know. Um, people who worship Satan, who worship demons and so forth, they believe in things like miracles and healing and blessing and cursing. They believe in the power of the supernatural. And those things all came from Christianity and Judaism. You know, those things, those, if you look at the prophets, Christians hate to hear this, you know, because there's so many cessationists out there and they think there's something evil about the supernatural. And then you look at Jesus Christ. What did he do? He cast out demons. He worked miracles. He prophesied. Um, everything he did was supernatural. You know, he never worked. These people love to say that, that uh, hard work is the answer. Where they say that study is the answer, and Jesus didn't study. He wasn't a student. The people who, the, the disciples weren't students. They were fishermen and a tax collector, you know, uh, people like that. It's, it's just the funniest thing. That people think that you can learn about God through study, and there's no one in the Bible who got to God that way, not one person. And yet there's all these people who were shepherds, and, you know, David was a shepherd, Amos was a shepherd. Um, People who, people who had simple jobs, and they were the people that, that did things, that God did things through. So we have, we have a lot of stupid ideas uh, about, about the supernatural. A lot, most Christians do. Satan has managed to cut us off from it because he knows the, supernatural, or the supernatural approach to Christianity is what destroys him. And the reason the world is ending now, and the end of the age is coming, and the church has failed, and, uh, and Satan has won over the hearts of man... It's because he got us to give up the supernatural side of Christianity, which is really just about all of Christianity. So uh, I'll tell you what he showed me. Um, God gives people revelation, as I've been saying, if you, especially if you speak in tongues. You, know, you, lie, you speak in tongues two or three hours a day, and what you'll do is you'll speak in tongues, and maybe you'll, you won't really think of it, anything about uh, what's happening when you're, when you're speaking in tongues. But then two hours later, the next day, four hours later, at some point in the near future, suddenly you'll start to understand things. Or you'll, you'll, you'll read something in the Bible you've never been able to understand before, and suddenly you'll know exactly what it means. You'll understand the symbolism, and it's all clear to you, and you understand that what people have been teaching about it for 2,000 years is complete filth. You know, So, so God fills people with revelation. He still does it today. And it, it's, it's what's supposed to guide us. People say, I was talking to someone today, and this person was saying, oh, the Bible's the only way, the Word of God is the only... That's not true. The word of God is not is not the, the Bible. The written word of God is not the answer. It's it's very important, and you have to hold on to it and use it as a reference tool to see if everything else is all right. Everything else that, that you work with, but Abraham didn't have the Bible. You know, think about that. I mean, the Bible didn't exist. Um, Moses didn't have the Bible. He had to write it. You know, 
Think about that. Um, the Bible was gradually compiled up until the time of Malachi. And nobody in the, no, none of the disciples had the New Testament. None of them ever read the book of Revelation, except, of course, John who wrote it. You know, um, they weren't familiar with Paul's, with Paul's they, most of them wouldn't have been familiar with Paul's writings, at least not until later in life. So people have this idea that they, they seem to think that there, you could just go out and buy a King James Bible in ancient Babylon, and that's what Abraham did. And he read it and he said, wow, this is fantastic. And, and that's not true. What Abraham had was the Spirit of God, and he had visits from God. God came and visited him, you know, uh, in the flesh. So Abraham had God himself. So if you have the Holy Spirit, and you hear from the Holy Spirit, and you get revelation, that's more important than reading the Bible, because people have read the Bible for thousands of years and still gotten everything wrong. The, the Mormons read the Bible, and, and Mormonism takes you to hell. It's a cult. It's not Christianity. Uh, I, I, it, it, these things are so obvious, and yet people get so mad when you say them. And it shows how deluded people are. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you become deluded, and you believe in insane things. Which brings me back to the topic of Revelation as it relates to these thought leaders and these other nuts on the left who, who are... Well, what's going, what you, if, you, if you watch these people, you'll notice that they, they try to make themselves seem sophisticated, and they like to use the word theory. You know, queer theory, they say. Isn't that right? Um, critical race theory. They, they try to... Theory, you know, when you, when you hear the word theory, the first thing you think about is science, and after that, math. You think of people who are really intelligent. You know, I, I, I used to be a physicist, and I, 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 you know, I would ride the elevator every day with, with people who either got Nobel Prizes or came close. And I know what smart academics look like. And these people that come up with these theories are not smart, smart academics. The people in the liberal arts tend to be you know, a little bit above average intelligence. And they're trying to glamorize themselves and make themselves look, um, look brilliant when they're not. So they'll say this theory and that theory. And... Um, they present it as though it's something new and amazing that's going to change your life. And if you're a Christian, you, you kind of, and you watch them talk, you, you recognize that this is the same sort of thing that people who hear from God do. When somebody talks to you and they're speaking revelation, the Holy Spirit will move in your heart if you hear from the Holy Spirit. And it's like fireworks are going off inside you because you get all these, uh, suddenly all these connections start to appear. Things you didn't see before, suddenly you, saw, suddenly you see. And it's, it's a wonderful experience. So what's going on with these people on the left is they're counterfeiting it. They're, they have counterfeit revelation. And I've been saying for a long time, I don't know, 10 years or something, that um, the Internet was going to be used as a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is supposed to speak to all, the, all of us all Christians and unite us and teach us the same thing so we're all at peace with each other and we have the same doctrine and because people reject the Holy Spirit and they make up doctrine you know we end up with Catholicism which is insane and we end up with uh, homosexual priests in um, the Church of England and, and one, one, one type of lunacy after another you know uh, no fish on Friday things that have no relationship to Christianity Infant baptism, which is ridiculous, baptizing a person who has no idea what's going on. So the Holy Spirit is supposed to speak to us. He's supposed to give us doctrine. He's supposed to tell us things. And because we don't speak in tongues, we don't get that. But we're supposed to. And if you do that, you get revelation. When you talk to other people who get revelation, they, they, to them it's confirmation because they've heard it already from God. So what's going on is these people on the left, if, if you don't hear, everybody hears some spirits. Everyone hears some spirits. And if you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit, you're hearing from other spirits. And, and the, other, the spirits you're hearing from are not good. You're hearing from Satan and you're in his little imps, you know, the demons and the fallen angels. Excuse me, go ahead a little bit of this. Thank you, Lord, for this stuff. I speak all glory and power and victory and honor and praise to you in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God. Thank you. So be it. Oh. It's just too good. So, I just thought I should let people know that uh, this revelation that God gave me about the internet being a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit, it, Satan uses it to tie people together, you know, through social media, and it, he uses it to uh, keep people anonymous so they're not afraid to, to vent their filth on each other, their anger and hatred, and, and we're not afraid to look at pornography, and there's so many things we're not afraid to do on the internet that we would be terrified to do in real life. 
He's used it to bring out the evil in us, and he's used it to connect us to reinforce the evil in each other. So it's the exact opposite of what the Holy Spirit does. And these people that, that teach this garbage, this nonsense, they're doing it through the Internet. So exactly what I said would happen is happening. And I didn't see how it would happen, but here it is. So you need to know that. You need to know that there's counterfeit revelation out there. That's what these people on the left are hearing, and it's coming from the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist, is, I guess, is just Satan. I mean, it's the spirit that says, do everything your own way, um, listen to human beings. I mean, anything other than God, you know. Um, worship the government, believe in the government. Think The Jews have this, this crazy idea. They worship the government. They made the government their Messiah. Jewish people say this, you know, Jewish people who are religious are, are angry at Jews who are not religious, and they say they've made, they've made the government their Messiah. I didn't come up with that myself. Um, the Antichrist, the anti means instead of. It doesn't just mean against. So anything that's a substitute for the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ and Yahweh, that's Antichrist. So these people are, uh, they're like, uh, what they are, God showed me, is they're Satan's evangelists. They're the, the evangelists of the Antichrist. And there's a lot of other people that are doing the same thing. You know, um, secular musicians, just about everyone in show business, comedians. Comedians are, you know, Stephen Colbert, John Stewart. These people are evangelists for Satan. They spread anger. They spread misinformation. They... Uh, they abuse Christians, I mean actual Christians, not leftist Christians. So they, they convince other people that in order to be accepted, they have to be like them. And the Antichrist works through the herd instinct. You have to understand that human beings are herd creatures. You can go on YouTube right now, and you can see a, a video of a young lady who, she was out someplace in public, and there was something out there, like a mailbox or a statue, I don't, I don't remember what it was. And she, she started walking around in circles, just to see what other people would do. And within a few minutes, a bunch of people were walking around this thing in circles with her. And that's what human beings are like. We don't look up to see what's right. We don't look up to God. We look around to our right and left to some idiot on our, our left or idiot on our right. And we say, well, whatever that person is doing, that must be correct. So we're herd creatures. And the, the Antichrist works through the herd instinct. He, he, want, he wants you to do what other people um, approve of. And he brought the word cool into our vocabulary back in like the 50s or something. It's, it's funny that this word is actually a pretty old word. Young, young kids use it, and they think it's uh, they think it's something new. Just like when they dye their hair orange and purple, and they think that's something new. That came from the, like about 1970. Anyway, this concept of coolness, you know, that's an anti-Christian thing. That's a satanic thing. People want to be cool, so they look around, they see what everybody else is doing, and they do the same thing. So whenever you see that, whenever you see peer pressure at work, you're, you're looking at the spirit of Antichrist. It, 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 peer pressure, ask yourself... Has, have my peers ever pressured me to do something good? You know, they pressure you to smoke dope, they pressure you to have sex early, they pressure, they'll pressure you to shoplift, you know, uh, there's no end to the stupid things that people will, will pressure you to do. So, uh, you, you, if you have any common sense at all, you should know that peer pressure is evil, and, and the reason is it comes from the spirit of the Antichrist. So I guess, I don't know, I guess that's all I wanted to tell you. I wanted you to know that these people have, they're, they're spreading false revelation, and they are evangelists for Satan. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to say was uh, I, every, every so often I get new confirmation. And when I say every so often, I mean like every two or three days. I get new confirmation that, that this world is, is washed up, that America is done, it's washed up, it's finished. I gave that bird something to play with like 15 minutes ago, and I hoped that it would keep him quiet, and now I, get that, I think he's done with it. So I may be in for trouble. Anyway, um, so today... I saw a story about this guy, maybe it was yesterday, I saw a, sto a story about this guy, named, I, I think his name is Aaron Edwards in England, he's a theologian, a Methodist theologian, and he works at a Methodist college. Me Methodism is supposed to be, a, it's supposed to be a, a branch of Christianity, you know, and Christianity, one of the basic tenets of Christianity is that sexual perversion is, is abomination, and it's not just in the Old Testament, it's in the New Testament, and people twist the truth, and they try to come up with ways to excuse it and, and to criticize people who are against it. But it's unquestionably true. So this guy had the nerve to go on Twitter and criticize sexual perversion and the way it was hurt in the church. And he, he was abused tremendously by other people on Twitter. And on top of that, the college that he works for, this Methodist college, 
suspended him, and now they're threatening to turn him in as a terrorist because he says homosexuality isn't part of Christianity, which is true. It's never been part of Christianity. I mean, everyone, everyone who knows anything about history knows this. And that disturbed me. I said, well, that's, that's another sign of the apocalypse. And then I thought about, uh, I should go look and see what the comments are like, what people are saying to him on Twitter. And I looked at the things people were saying, and it was just amazing. Some of them were claiming to be on the side of God, and one of them was saying, you should get in touch with the Holy Spirit and get him to tell you to love everyone. And, you know, so then you'll, then you'll be in favor of homosexuality. And I thought, here's somebody, this is the worst form of blasphemy. Here is somebody saying, the Holy Spirit is in favor of sodomy. And if you would just listen to him, you would, you would know. Um, so it, it's just one more thing that shows me that the end is here. That, that it, it shows me that people are deliberately obtuse and you can't get through to them anymore. They're so proud that they need the tribulation. They need, to be, they need agony. They need terror. They need humiliation. They need starvation. They need physical pain and disease. They need all the things that the tribulation promises. They need to be at each other's throats, miser miserable, trying to kill each other all the time. So it's about to happen. It's really about to happen. It's not a joke. These people, either the tribulation will either save them or destroy them. But the mercy that God shows us now, we're, things are still fairly good now. I mean, we, st we live in a time where everyone is born now into a plague, into a, into a world that is uh, in, in the midst of a plague that's never going to go away. And we have a bunch of other little, little plagues going on and shortages and all sorts of other troubles. Life is still kind of acceptable if you're close to God and you manage to get blessed. Um, but when the tribulation comes, it's not going to be like that. People are going to wish they could die. They're going to they're going to beg for death. The Bible says they're they're going to envy the dead, and that's what that's what some people need. That's the only thing that's going to get through to them. And a lot of people will not even be reached by that. They're going to be they're going to go down to hell cursing God the whole way. But it really is coming. It's it's, it's not uh, it's not something I imagine. It's not something other people imagine. It is in the Bible. People love to say the rapture is not the word. The word rapture is not in the Bible, which is which is unbelievably stupid. You know, Paul described the rapture. He described it. So does he have to use the word? That, that makes no sense to me. I don't think the word transfiguration is in the Bible, but the trans but the transfigure the transfiguration happened. So I don't know. Um, we're at the end. We're done. I can't and I can't wait. I can't wait to get out of this place. As much as I love my wife and I love my life and, I, and it's pleasant for me, I, I, I was telling my wife the other day, it's like, it's like we went to Somalia on vacation and we stayed in the nicest hotel and we had great food and we were safe, but you don't want to live in Somalia for the rest of your life. You know, Somalia is a miserable country where just about everyone is, I hate to say this, but it's true, most people in Somalia are, are jerks. That's why Somalia is, like, is the way it is. You know, it, it's a country of hate and misery and violence. And that's why I picked Somalia. And people in Africa say the same thing, so don't get mad at me. So I was saying, it's like, it's like we went to Somalia on vacation. We can't go home. So I can't wait. I want to go home. I, I want to get away from Somalia. I don't want to be in Somalia anymore, even though I'm having a pleasant time. And I wish I could reach people, but it's, it's I, you know, I've reached so few people. I've, I've maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 people in my life. So uh, I don't know. I, I guess that's it. I guess I just want to let you know that this stuff is false revelation and that uh, the world is beyond hope. It's, it's not going to get better. And these, these people who are preaching that Christians are going to take over the world, they're in for a very sad, a very terrible, unpleasant awakening. So I hope this is useful to you. I hope you'll get close to God and spend time in His presence. Stay with Him. Be as close to Him as you can. Get baptized with the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. You know, get your demons cast out. Don't, don't be too proud to say that you have demons. Jesus believed in demons. If you're a Christian you don't believe in demons, uh, you're not a Christian. You don't believe, you're, you're saying Jesus was either crazy or misinformed or a liar. So uh, I hope this is helpful to you. Um, like I always say, you can't say you weren't warned. So try to make, try to make good use of what I'm telling you.